so terrible. Yeah, I don't know if you remember me from New York, but um, I had a quick question for you from a coaching standpoint, because I am a coach as well. Um, could you compare and contrast the resources available to you inside the Wubble versus what you're accustomed to at your own facility, either for practice or game? Um, I mean, I think we've been okay. I mean, I'm spoiled, you know, when I'm at home, walking in my own office, which is in our own practice facility, which is in our own arena. So uh, that's a little bit different, but I'm getting my walking steps in walking around the campus. So uh, it's probably healthier for me to be here, actually. Um, <laughs> The, uh, you know, day to day, I mean, we've been able to meet okay. You don't have necessarily um, an office set up the same where you have all your computers and TVs and whiteboards and all that in one place, but we've made, been able to make do with that. I mean, we have a team room that we've, we've set up into our own weight room, but it has a TV and a whiteboard and meeting room if we want to do that or if we, we want to meet there as coaches. Um, I have no complaints with, you know, our preparation set up. We knew it was going to be a little bit different, but, you know, I think part of, you know, uh, the coaching profession is to be adaptable. And um, I think it's been okay. Kareem? Hey, Mike, we heard a lot about, um, a lot of evaluations about today's scrimmage. So I want to hear about um, from you, what you thought, how it went, the good and the bad. Um, I thought it started out, um, I'll give it, uh, I'll give it about a C plus maybe, um, to a B minus at the most. Um, but coaches are typically hard on the first day. I thought that we needed to play against somebody so that the physicality would be, uh, evident to us of what it's going to be like. Um, I thought we rushed ourselves a little bit on offense. Um, but we got better as the scrimmage went along, which is, you know, part of what I wanted to see. I mean, I just think that, you know, when you go against somebody else, um, you know, you, you, you find out some things right away. So uh, we've got a couple more days of doing that against other teams, and it'll help us out. You know, I'm, I'm probably a harsh grader, but I would give us a C-plus for the first day. Christy? Coach, with the presence of Elena Coates inside and – you know, you have Essence Carson with her defensive motor on the perimeter as well. What are the defensive things that you liked about the scrimmage today? Um, that I thought uh, for the most part after we got going that we matched the physicality. Um, I thought we, you know, did a good job other than a few times uh, rebounding the ball. Uh, I thought our defensive transition was fairly good. I just thought that our communication was a little bit late. It was there, but late. Um, and so, you know, you're just trying to get used to playing with each other. Um, we, we threw a lot at them today to kind of do something like we would do in a game with a scouting report. We were going to play this player a certain way, another player another way. And, you know, I don't think it was all that smooth the first day, but it was okay. <coughs> Adam Zalanka. Thanks. Hi, Mike. Uh, I'm going to have two quick questions for you. One is about Elena. I don't want to make all of this all about Elena, but I just wanted to know, since she is rehabbing back in D.C., um, do you have any updates on, like, how her rehab is going, or are, they, or are you being at least provided, you know, kind of how, how frequently are you in touch with doctors back in Washington about how Elena is doing? Well, it's not so much the doctors, it's our rehab people. And our trainer is in a constant uh, daily contact with Elena. Um, I, if I were in your shoes, uh, I would go with the assumption that uh, Elena's not playing this year. That's the assumption I have. Um, and so, um, you know, we, this, this pandemic basically put whatever the length of this has been, four months, has put us behind by that much time almost. Um, you know, she was at a good place in her rehab, but when you can't do any hands-on and you can't do on the court things for four months, uh, it set us back. So there is no assumption by us that she will play this summer. Um, so, you know, we, we talked to, uh, she has a meeting with her surgeon, but basically it's with our, it's with our uh, rehab people that the constant uh, communication is with them and with Elena. And so, um, we do a daily re report on all of our players, and she's a part of that report. Jen? 
Hey, Coach. I know we've asked you a couple times about starting lineups, but did today's scrimmage help you in terms of figuring that out at all? No. Simple answer, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a better idea when we get to about Wednesday or Thursday. Gotcha. Chantel? Hi. I was just curious. Um, in any season, rehab and prehab is super important. This year, given that so many games are going to be played on one-day turnarounds, you aren't flying all around the country, but how much more important is that rehab and prehab factor going to be in this season? It's going to be huge. I mean, I think that, you know, we've known going into this that, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of game off a day, game off a day. Luckily, we have a couple sequences in there where we have two or three days in between, and we can get a full day's rest plus some preparation. But um, it'll become a little bit more like a playoff series in the sense that, you know, in that day in between games, uh, you really can't practice that long. It'll be uh, get your shooting, get your rehab stuff done, get some film work, and just kind of do touch-ups. Uh, a lot of our work is going to have to be done going into this. It's just there's nothing going to be normal about it. Um, and, you know, on the times where we have two or three days, then maybe we can get a good full practice in there uh, to try to clean up some things. But, um, you know, every day is going to be an adjustment. I, I don't think we'll spend more than 60 minutes on the court as a team. Then the players will stay on the court to do shooting or do some other work. But as a team, I don't, I don't foresee very many days where we'll be on the court more than an hour uh, as a group once we get started. Adam? Thanks. Um, my other question for you, Mike, was just that it seems that going into the season, you're going to have several players who have previously been on the bench, bench roles, uh, coming off the bench. Now, uh, seeing expanded minutes, I think we've talked about this in a previous call, like Tiana, Ariel Atkins, and Powers. Atkins is already a starter, um, and a few more. Uh, do, is that do, do you want? Do you wonder if that's going to end up being the theme of your season? That you've got this reworked roster and players who you, who you've had on this pretty strong bench are now going to sort of step in the spotlight, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I, I, out of necessity, you're going to have to. Um, you know, we're toying with the idea of using one of them um, in in continuing to be an off the bench uh, role because we can play to their strengths a little bit that way. Uh, but that, you know, to the question a few minutes ago about starting lineups, that's something we're still trying to figure out. You want to have a little bit of balance uh, in, in having maybe a go-to score in some ways come off a bench. So, um, you know, that's, that's a balancing act. It's also just an opportunity for us to find out about some players. Can they hand, handle a, an expanded role? Um, or, or is there, you know, long-term... Uh, role in this league to be, you know, a good bench player. Um, I, I just think that this is one of those experiment and find out kind of situations. Lindsay? Yeah, obviously everyone's kind of dealing with some smaller numbers right now. I, I've heard, talk to coaches who have, you know, six players able to practice right now. Are all the players, all, all 10 able to practice right now? No, we've, uh, we've practiced several days with nine um, okay. and just trying to watch our minutes uh, Shea Petty has been out the last couple of days, uh, did part of practice today, did not scrimmage, will practice uh, hopefully full uh, tomorrow. Um, and we're just trying to watch minutes too. We just don't want to beat anybody up when you only have 10 players. Um, so, you know, Eric and Asia have, you know, done some of the things in practice, particularly Eric. And, you know, luckily, we, we added one more uh, short scrimmage tomorrow just so we could go against somebody else and have substitutes instead of just going against ourselves. Um, and leadership-wise, Tiana said that she's been using her voice a little bit more. Is that something you've noticed? Yeah, I mean, I think they all have been in the sense that they know that uh, the, the main voices from a year ago in you know, Elena and Tosh uh, and Christy uh, are not here. Uh, it's, you know, Leilani does it naturally. Uh, Shea Petty, because she's a point guard, uh, it does it naturally. But, I th but I've noticed them all kind of chipping in. Um, you can't miss Maisha's voice no matter what anyway. Um, but, you know, Emma has stepped up and been more vocal. Uh, both Ariels have been. Tiana certainly has been. And, you know, Tiana's been here uh, a long time now with this team and knows, you know, what I expect and what I think. And, 
I think she has a pretty good perspective on things. Tyler? I got you. I know with Leilani and Essence, they're two veterans and they know how to come into a new situation and kind of adapt and be ready. But is there anything special that you did this season to help them get accustomed to the team or maybe build camaraderie? You know, it's funny in a, in a weird way, I think just coming down here to Florida uh, has sped that process up because uh, they're all basically living uh, together one way or the other in, in, in either in the hotel or the villas and they see each other every meal and they talk and there's not a lot of other things to do uh, as far as, you know, you're not going anywhere. So you get to know your teammates better. They've, you know, done meals together. Um, you know, they had a, a pizza night together. So I think just the fact that we're here uh, helps them get um, involved with their teammates more than they would have maybe in any other circumstance. Kareem? Hey, Mike, now that we've had a few more days, I was just curious, um, what has stood out about the evolution of Elena Coates so far? And what have you noticed about her mindset about wanting to kind of get her career back on the right path? Well, I think, uh, you know, when she came here, we knew that that was important to her. Uh, she and I talked about it the night before she signed with us. And, you know, I kind of challenged her. I said, here's your opportunity. You know, uh, it's been a rough start for you for various reasons uh, on and off the court. And so, um, you know, here's an opportunity. You know you're going to play. Um, you know, if you do the right things and work, uh, then you can, you know, revive your career and, you know, add to your game. And she's worked hard at it. Um, you know, she's never I been known to be a player uh, to play more in a couple feet from the basket, but we've seen her uh, trying to work on that. She's diligent about her pre-practice routine and her work. Uh, she's working on her free throw shooting. Um, and defensively, um, she, she's a really good help defender. I mean, she blocked a couple shots today in the scrimmage. Uh, it's something that we're going to really need from her. And I think that as we go along, we're going to see her have a bigger impact uh, on our team. Christy? Kara Leslie, um, a player who was injured for you last year, um, has said that it's been a big adjustment for her uh, just to be on the court. It was one thing to watch last year on the sidelines, but how has she um, acclimated herself to what is necessary? I mean, like everybody else, you know, uh, it's, it's a, a new team and a new season. Uh, as, as you alluded to, you know, watching is one thing, but doing is another. And I think you know, even though you know our concepts, once you get out there, the speed of the game picks up uh, and you have to react a lot quicker. Uh, you know, a lot of us are really good judges of things when we're sitting on the sidelines, but also now when you're in the middle of the fray, um, you know, the whole thing looks faster to you. So, you know, she's had to uh, learn to communicate quicker, um, to learn the offense and have a feel for how to fit in with her teammates. She shot the ball really, really well throughout the camp. And I think that's been good for her confidence. She's always had a good defensive mindset. And so I think that that kind of is an anchor for her that, you know, even if somewhere else she's struggling a little bit, that she can know that she'll be a factor and a contributor for us on the defensive end. And the offense will come as we go. Jen? But you mentioned a couple of days ago that you were going to try playing Maisha in kind of that point forward Draymond Green type role um, at times. How much of that did she do today and, and how did she look? She did a little bit of that today. It was uh, tough because we haven't really had the minutes of a full court situation to have her do that much in practice. So I just did it for a few minutes and it was it was OK. You know, I mean, it just there's there's no rhythm to it at the moment. Um, probably at the moment, because we actually played her as the point guard for a few minutes. But I think that she's gotten better uh, when she rebounds the ball and starts the break by starting out with the dribble. I think that's comfortable for her right now. And she's been good at that part of it. Lindsay? Yeah, I have a couple of questions um, that are related. First of all, I know you all a few years ago got to meet with John, with Rep. John Lewis and be in his office. And I wanted to remember, what, what are your biggest memories from that? And then I've been asking all the players about what it means to them to have Brianna Taylor's name on the back of their jersey. So I wanted to ask you, it won't be on your jersey, but what it means if a league is, off, is honoring them. So. Well, for the John Lewis thing, I mean, uh, the other night was really sad for me. Um, 
I got to know him a little bit. That's how we uh, introduced him to our players. I had gotten, I had met him, I don't know, four or five years ago uh, in Atlanta, getting ready to get on a flight actually. And we started talking and then we sat on the plane together and just, you know, talked about a lot of different things. And uh, he was gracious enough to, uh, you know, host our team. Uh, I had asked him if he would do that. And, uh, you know, uh, I think you've probably seen some of the comments by players about what a meaningful day that was. Um, I've just always had this great respect for how he's conducted his life and what kind of an example he's been. And uh, I think our country will miss him. Uh, hopefully they will honor his legacy uh, in Congress by kind of remembering what he stood for. Um, you know, uh, it's very hard in, in a social justice movement uh, for people to understand what he and others went through uh, in a nonviolent manner. And, um, you know, I mean, we've all seen the footage and be reminded, luckily I'm old enough to have witnessed it, seen it uh, when I was young. And so, uh, for our players, a lot of it's on film, and um, you know the, it's it's a very um, different way of looking at things when you can put your life on the line nonviolently uh, to you know affect change. And I just I've always admired him, um, you know, and that, and I just felt that that was a, a such a great moment for our players to meet somebody like that, and um, I'm hoping it stays with people. Um, and I and I hope that you know that the people he's touched, whether they agreed with everything he did or said, I think that there has to be some reflection this weekend on what somebody like that has meant uh, in the context of where we are in our society and where we can be. Um, I, I said this uh, a while back uh, when George Floyd was murdered. I I said you know um, I I had quoted. Uh, John Lewis, because I, I said, you know, I asked him one time, and I said, you know, how can you keep doing this? How, how have you been able to kind of keep your spirit, um, you know, in the midst of all of this? And he had a real simple answer. He said, because it's necessary. And I thought that, you know, that was such a profound answer because, you know, for a lot of people um, who, you know, say they want change and want to be a part of change, it's very difficult for them to sustain it over a period of time. And I think that's the hardest part that we have going forward in our country is that we've had moments, maybe not like this, but we've had moments in our past where we've had opportunities to uh, affect change. And if it doesn't happen right away, we tend to give up on things. And, you know, the fight is a long fight. I mean, you're talking about a man who died at the age of 80, who has been fighting since he was a teenager. And so, uh, that's that's how hard it is. And, you know, he made the comment also that he said, you know, uh, I used to get down about it. He said, but when I was young, I never thought there would be a black man as president of the United States. He said, and now that has happened. So I have to give, he said, I have to give perspective that when you're frustrated and you don't think there is change, there was a huge change in our country uh, 11 years ago um, that he never thought would happen in his lifetime. So um, we have to stay with the fight, and uh, that's that's uh, the the huge uh, effect that he's had on me. And after that, I don't remember your second question. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just about Breonna Taylor and what, what does it mean oh, to be on her? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I think it's um, I think it's meaningful for our players to uh, kind of remind themselves of where we are and what they can do, and what we have available in front of us this summer. Uh, down here in Florida that, you know, we can use our platform and our voices to hopefully affect change too. And I think that, you know, for our, our players in the women's NBA but to have uh, a woman of color that was um, brutalized uh, is, is extra meaningful, uh, unfortunately, but it's extra meaningful uh, to their thought process and how we go about affecting change. Christy? Uh, it's tough to follow this um, with where I'm going, but um, the fans um, obviously won't be in the arena, won't be able to um, support vocally on site, but 
what kind of message do you want to send the fans? Um, the games tip off on Saturday, you guys play at five. What message do you want to send the fans who won't be there in person to support you on and off the floor? Yeah, I, I, I've had a couple thoughts about it, that. I think the first one would be um, is that we're sorry. I mean, we're sorry that we're in this situation as a world. Uh, and I know that so many people were looking to celebrate together uh, a championship and to raise a banner, and that's going to be delayed. Um, um, and, and so we're not going to be the same team. I mean, you know, I, I see comments here and there about, you know, uh, and they run the gamut. I mean, we've had people say, well, go win the championship anyway. And there are others saying, oh, they're going to go in 22. And I've seen all the different range. I, I think that what we're going to see is a work in progress. And I think that, you know, for our fans, um, you know, be excited for watching our players get better. Uh, be excited and thankful for the ones that have put all they have into making this work. Uh, I have no idea. I really don't have an idea of what our season's going to look like because we've had changes. And, you know, as I said the other day, we did a lot of off-season planning based on having other players here. And so what we are is um, something new. Um, but it can, for the long term, uh, make our franchise better, make our team better for the long run, so that at some point when we all are back together again, all of our players, all of our fans, and we can celebrate together, um, we'll be a better team in the long run for it. And so, you know, get excited about, you know, watching a, a sport that you love, watching a group of players that know how hard they play, and, and a group of players that really appreciated all that our fans added to our season last year. Um, the support we had at St. E's and, and the, the atmosphere we created and the home court advantage that we had, it'll be missed this summer. I mean, it's going to be really different. Um, you know, I really do believe we had the best home court in the league last year, and that's going to be tough to be without. Um, someday we'll get that back again, but um, our players appreciated it. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to remind ourselves of that uh, as we go forward, that there are people out there that, you know, we are playing for. That's the hard thing, I think, in this whole situation here is to remember that there are people back home who are, you know, hanging on every play and watching the games on TV or online and uh, that, you know, we're going to bring some joy to them. All right, everybody. On that note, uh, thank you, Coach. Uh, thank you, all of you guys, for joining in on our media day. Uh, different, but still productive. So thank you. Uh, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you all. Thanks, Katia. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Yeah.